what's going on YouTube? It is Dom, aka KT2, and I'm coming back to you guys again for yet another video, guys. And today, you guessed it, we got another banger for you guys today. Another banger. Um, I have a, a real life engineer officer with me today, guys. Something that I was too bitch made to become. That's why I picked logistics. So for this interview, we're actually gonna cover up our uh, our, our interviewee. Without further ado, guys, um, Brian, welcome to the show, bro. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Hey, that's Big fan. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Brian, just to reiterate to the audience, what type of officer are you? I am a 12 Alpha, so I am an engineer officer. Tyler, I am a platoon leader and a horizontal platoon. So you're a, you're a 12 Alpha engineer officer and you're a platoon leader right now in what what type of platoon? A uh, horizontal platoon. So within the engineer branch, we have different uh, different types of engineer jobs. They have staffers, they have uh, bridging, they have horizontal, vertical, and the one I am in is horizontal. So we do more of the um, digging and construction, dealing with like heavy equipment such as dozers, high X's. Uh, dump truck, hemis and loaders, and stuff of that nature. So, wait, wait, hold on. So what you're telling me is that you don't just blow stuff up, you actually build stuff as an engineer? Yeah, so uh, as an engineer officer, you learn all of the MOSs within the engineer branch, and there's specific ones, so 12 Bravos are the, um, the they're the, the ones that blow stuff up. 12 November, which is the ones that I'm a between Europe, we do more of the heavy equipment. So we all work together as an engineer branch and get the job done. So we'll have the 12, 12 uh, Bravos blow the bridge, and then we'll have the other ones, the bridgers, fix the bridge. And then um, us, we do like more of runway repairs and tank ditches and things of those nature. Wow. Okay. Is, is this, did you get to pick the type of platoon you were going to, or is this just like, I'm sorry for right now, these are just off to, guys, these are just off topic questions that are not part of the interview. I'm just curious, did, did you get to pick the type of platoon that you were going to, or they just said, hey, you're going here, or did you want to blow stuff up? Like, hey, you gotta, gotta break that down for me and the audience, because we're all curious now. Like, you know, I thought you were gonna be like sapper tabbed and stuff. No, you, you don't really choose your platoon, so it's basically just, um, you learn everybody's job as, in, in the engineer branch. And then they put you where you're going to go. So you can learn a lot of the sapper stuff, become a sapper, but still become an engineer officer for a horizontal platoon or a bridging, bridging, uh, bridging unit. So it just depends on what's available and where they want to put you. So you really don't have a choice. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. All right. All right, now back to the regularly scheduled interview. Brian. Can you tell us, can you tell the audience what, what rank are you? I am an O1. I'm a second lieutenant right now. But you didn't start off as a, you, you, didn't, you didn't just come into the military through ROTC or, or, or OCS or, or West Point as a normal guy. You actually had some real enlisted time too, I think. Correct, that is correct. So I enlisted in 2017 as of 12 November as a heavy equipment <laughs> operator. So, <laughs> So yes, yeah, so I went to uh, basic training in Fort Leonard Wood, AIT in Fort Leonard Wood as well, learned all the engineer operations as the 12 November, and then after that, came home to my unit, and then I went through the OCS program, and then after that, I graduated OCS, branch engineer, and I went to uh, EBOLIS, which is Engineer Basic Officer Leadership Course, and I completed that as well. So now I'm a certified engineer officer after completing both of them. Wow. Was, um, engineer must have been your first pick. Oh, uh, it was. So my, I had three choices. It was engineer, uh, logistics, and then for the third one, I just put aviation just on a whim, just if I would get it. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> How long have you been um, an engineer officer now? Including commissioning time, you know, how, I mean, like when you just commissioned, about how long? So I commissioned in August 2019. So I've been an, an engineer officer and an officer for about 
going on two years. So this August will be my two year mark. August will be two years. You've been an officer. Okay, okay, okay. Big money, big money right here. You know, big spender. Um, so how long have you been a platoon leader? So I've been a platoon leader. So right when I got commissioned, I was put in a PL slot. But from what I was told, it's unrated time. So I needed to actually complete e-bullet, my, my, B, my, B, my bullet class, in order to become a real platoon leader. And I completed that in May of last year so since i got back i've been a certified pl as they say and so i've been a pl for going on almost a year right now okay, that's what's up well, that's the best job in the army right there being a platoon leader yeah. Bet best job in the army um so uh normally I, I ask people why did you pick to be engineer officer but it's, it's pretty obvious why you picked engineering because your enlisted job was literally uh <laughs> what you're doing now, but just as, a, as, an, as an enlisted, correct or not correct? That is correct. So as, as an enlisted on the 12th of November, became an officer, so I just switched to 12 Alpha. Now I handle more of the bigger operation side of the, of the house. I, myself, I have the leadership style of really talking to my soldiers and getting to know them. Um, I, I'm assuming you've talked to your soldiers and and, and I'm sure you told them that, you know, hey, I was once in your position before. I was actually a 12 November. Um, do, they, do, do they respect you more because you were actually enlisted, did the job, and now you're an officer? Or do you think that matters at all? I, I think it does. I think they, they don't say it, but I think they, they do because I know what they're going through and I know what, what they're doing. And... Um, I know how to speak some of their pieces about um, the equipment. I know how to operate it. So I think I do have a little, I gained a little respect just because I was enlisted and their job as well as a 12 November. So I think, yeah, it does play into a little wall of, um, it gives me a little brownie point because I, I did do their job as well before. Word. Okay. 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 So. Um, can you, can you break it down for us, bro? Like, what is a day-to-day -day life like as a, uh, as, as an, as a 12 alpha, as an engineer officer? Like, can you break us down from waking up to, I guess, going to sleep? Uh, all right. Okay. So, a day in, as an engineer officer. So, wake up at around zero, zero three, zero four around that time. Uh, we do some PT. And then after PT, we get to the office. About what time is PT over? So PT around maybe 4.35, and then PT ends at 6. Okay. Then we give, we give the soldiers about an hour or two to go uh, do some personal hygiene and get some breakfast. Then we have a formation about 08. And then from there, um, that's when we start getting into the nitty-gritty of um, we make sure all of the equipment is staged. We make sure we have everything done before, like the con op, the op order, and the draw. Everything is good on my side. And then all the soldiers are getting all the equipment uh, prepped for mission. And then right when, we, right when we're about to roll out, uh, that's when we get on the sand table, or we have a hasty sand table, or do a PowerPoint, and then we'll do an op order brief. And then we'll do a little convoy brief where we're going, and we just state about what, what we're going to do for that day. And then once the convoy brief and everything's done, trip ticket signed, um, from there, um, we push them out, we SP, we get to the site. And once we get to the site, we give another brief about the area we're in, and we, we talk about the scope of work and the operation we're going to do. We, have, we set up a little board. Like a little talk area there, and it has all like the pawn off and the mission and the draw stats and everything on the board. It's pretty much like a like an op order. And then from there, we just um, we oversight and we just make sure safety safety is, is probably the biggest key within our when within our engineer operations. I would say because we're dealing with uh, heavy equipment operations, so we got to make sure everybody has their PPE. They have water. And we got to make sure that operations are running smooth because um, with those big equipment, it can just take one one false move and 
a lot of things can go wrong. So a lot of times when we get on site, we, we treat safety as a key and everybody's a safety on the ground before we start our, before we start our operation. And we make sure that even if our operation is not complete, as long as everybody's safe, we had a good day. And that's it. Yeah. And then from there, um, from there, right when we're done with our operation, we, we take our VIX back to our AA assembly area. And then from there, um, we dismiss the soldiers and then we do it again the next day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, interesting. And definitely much different from my job. Totally different. It's, it's, it's amazing to hear every officer's job is so damn different. Um, I don't, I don't know why I thought everybody was going to be the same, but no, it, everybody's different. Um, anyway, moving on. If you could give us some uh, general responsibilities, I would say maybe like your top three or four general responsibilities as an engineer officer, I think that would also help to um, shed some light on being an engineer officer. All right, so top three priorities. Number one is a draw. Safety is the biggest part being in, in micro and then engineer operation. When when um, the chief commander comes or any higher ups come, the first thing I want to see is a draw. And then from there, um, the equipment and making sure all our equipment are online and making sure if any equipment is deadline, which means it's not working anymore, that we, um, we get them fixed for our maintenance section. And third one, probably, probably should have said this first, the third one, most important, is accountability and um, making sure our troops are okay. Then and just making sure our platoon stars and our quality and team leaders are taking care of the troops and just always protecting that. And anybody, anybody higher than them, just making sure that their their well being is okay and they don't get in trouble. That we always take the fall if anything goes wrong. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it definitely makes sense. It, it definitely makes sense. Um, so what would you say are the the overall benefits to being a, a engineer officer? If you can name some benefits, what do you think the benefits are? So benefits to me is um, we're, we're aligning it. So we actually get a view of the truth. I know some of the other officer branches, if, if you brand, say, finance, you're going to be in the office all day. You'll be in a staff like kind of position. So with the engineer unit, um, we actually get to interact with soldiers and have PL time. That's a good benefit for us. Another one is um, the transfer of our, our job duties. As the stuff we learn here as an engineer officer or just engineers in, in general, when we, when we go outside and, and we're not in uniform anymore, we can appreciate buildings, we can appreciate roads, and we can appreciate uh, terrain because they say engineers are the masters of terrain. Mm -hmm. We use terrain to the advantage. So when we see like mountains, when we see draws, when we see uh, valleys, like we just look at them so different now because um, in Bullet, they teach us like how to use the terrain to your advantage to um, be successful in your operation. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Definitely. Um, so with all those benefits, uh, can you tell me what you like the most and you like the least about being a 12 alpha? Hmm. What I like the most is just, um, I guess interacting with the soldiers, um, seeing them, talking to them, um, you just boost my morale. All the time, just talking and making me motivated just to see them. And probably the least one, huh? Hmm. I am not sure. I don't think I have any, no least, nothing least about this. Maybe um, the, the worst thing we do is just we work outside, but I like being outside anyway, so. <laughs> so that's all I can say for that part. 
Gotcha. No cons. Only pros. Y'all heard that, right? There's only pros about being an engineer officer. You work outside, you get to be with the Joes, and you get paid. Hey, it's, it's too easy. It's, it's easy money right there. Um, so, moving on, you don't have to tell us exactly where you're stationed or where you're at or where you're at unless you want to, but is there anything specific about being an engineer officer that can only be done at your current base? Or can what you do at your base be done everywhere? Hmm. So, no. So, my specific unit here is designed specifically for where I'm at. If something goes wrong, where I'm at right now, um, we have a lot of typhoons. So, having a horizontal unit here, it really helps when... Um, trees go down, buildings go down, and things like that. We have the equipment necessary to uh, fix uh, natural disasters. Our unit here is just, it's just specific to us, and not a lot of other engineers can do our job. The engineer officers can, but if you're not trained in this specific MOS, uh, you won't be able to do it. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. Um... Uh, there's a lot of typhoons there's so there's a lot of typhoons where you're at that is that is an interesting place guys we're not going to tell you exactly where he's at but um just know the army can bring you anywhere anywhere i'm pretty sure you guys can probably google and see so where do a lot of typhoons go well i don't think there's a lot of typhoons in the united states of america but there could be either way you guys can google that and figure that out and you know the uh, Army can bring you just about damn near anywhere. Um, so, uh, moving on, have you have you been deployed before? So no, I have not been deployed. Um, I have. So we have little deployments, um, like as a unit here. But as far as going overseas to um, a combat zone, I have not yet. So when you're in a combat zone. As an engineer officer, will your job change or will you do remotely pretty much the same job? Uh, it, I think it'll change drastically. Um, we'll be doing more of a, a defensive type of operation. So we'll be doing more of um, digging tank ditches. We'll be doing more of um, creating, um, constructing barriers for the base. We'll be doing more, be doing more construction. Um, when we're on the homeland, all we're doing is just training and stuff. But as, when we go out there, that's when a lot of the things we learn in Bullock and our real training kicks in, and we have to use our real skills to actually defend uh, a base or something like that. I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay. Um, if there was anything that you would change about your job, what what would you change? If there's anything that you would change. Hmm. Anything that would change. One thing. Maybe just newer equipment. Just uh, get up to date on uh, new equipment. And just have our equipment more. Um, just like fix quicker. Because once an equipment goes down. It takes. It takes a long time for it to get fixed. So. One thing I'd say is maybe just newer equipment, something that could last longer, or um, just more turnaround on the maintenance side of having our equipment get uh, back started up. And okay. Okay. Um, so, does the audience, you know, there, there's there's a, there's a a big a big question of do certain jobs transfer over to the civilian world and that's a lot of questions i get asked so does being you know a 12 alpha and engineer officer transfer over to the civilian world oh yes it does it does big time um the stuff you learn here as an engineer it can really transfer to the civilian side in a construction setting and also we try to recruit people who have good um, engineering operations outside who do construction on the outside. We try to bring them in here. So um, I know construction is a job that probably never go away while you're trying to build stuff. So I know a lot of the, the Joes here 
um, a good chance for over if they get a buy for a construction company outside. But I know it's their chance for really, really well. Okay, that that is great. That is great. Um, what are your plans now, Brian? Bro, you, you, you got to tell us, you know, with all these great opportunities on the outside, do you plan to stay in and, and do some more time? Do you want to do 20? Um, like, so so what what do you plan on doing? Um, so, yeah, I plan, I plan on staying in 20 years, 20 years strong. I'm going to try to do it. And um, hopefully when I get to captain rank, and I know we get a switch of ranks at that time, I'm probably still gonna still my still stay as an engineer officer. I'm pretty sure I will, and hopefully get company command time, and then from there, um, after company command, that's that's the sky's the limit. From there, and after you get company command, it's going to a battalion or a chief command from there. So uh, just I I'm the goal of becoming a company commander as an engineer, and then from there. Um, yeah, I'm just focusing on that right now. That's my 50 and 300 meters target for the future. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, um, I got, I got one more question for you. Um, if, if you were to go back in, if, if you were to go back, go all the way back to, to engineer, no, if you were to go all the way back to OCS, man, you got to think about fucking OCS. Holy moly. You go all the way back to OCS and you get to speak to everybody at the branching fair um, about being an engineer officer. What words of wisdom would you tell them about get if anybody looking to get into 12 Alpha to be an engineer officer? What would you tell them? Ooh, so... First of all, going back to OCS, if, if they didn't finish it, I would just tell them not to quit because uh, OCS, they really do test you there, so just don't quit. And if they already finished and they want to branch engineers, I would tell them um, it's going to be one of the best jobs you're ever going to find. And um, it's pretty much, there's, there's a lot of math going into it, but... Um, you should be fine. Math, they'll teach you it. They'll teach you your math skills in bullet. And just, just enjoy it and have fun. And uh, just know that you'll be outside, hopefully, in the dirt, you know, digging and, and looking around, stuff like that, while you're in bullet. But I'll just tell them just, just don't quit and come in and you're off to probably one of the best branches I think you probably get into because it does transfer over so well to the civilian side. It does transfer over so well to the civilian side. Okay. Okay. All right, you guys. You, you heard it there. Engineer officer is the best officer in the Army. Right behind logistics, guys. Right right behind logistics. You know, the best branch in the Army. Logistics. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, um, Brian, thank you for coming on the show today, man. I, I, dog, I appreciate that, man. No, thank you. Honestly, I'm a big fan. Um, I started watching your show before I even joined the military, and you're a big inspiration and motivation to me, and I, I know a lot of people out there, and uh, you pushed me when I was just joining, and as well as when I was going to OTS. Hey man, it, it is it is my pleasure uh, to even to even be able to have that that sphere of influence and to be even be able to help. Um, so, without further ado, guys, um, you guys can bid Brian farewell. I'm gonna speak to Brian, and uh, after the interview, if he wants to, only if he wants to. Um, you know, we, we will leave his Instagram handle um, in the description of the video, but I don't want these bikini models and these Instagram models trying to slide into his DMs. He's a married man. If you slide into his DMs, it better be only engineer questions, right? Engineer questions. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, you guys can hit me up on Snapchat. 
at klop95 or instagram at k at k i d t h n d r two as i always like to say at the end of all my videos don't live the same year 75 80 85 90 times and then try and call it a life my name is dom this is brian and we are out of here guys peace